I love the Batman Mythos and 2016 has had plenty to offer for Bat fans like myself. We got a new big screen rendition with Ben Affleck, a film adaptation of a beloved comic, The Return of 60's Batman, and to top it all off, Telltale Games gave us their own spin on The Dark Knight. the announcement for this game caught everyone off guard. Even though Telltale have made games based off Minecraft, Back to the Future, heck, even Wallace and Gromit, I never really thought of the possibility of them making a Batman game. And as I said, I'm a big fan of the Cape Crusader, so this quickly became one of my most anticipated games of 2016. So now that this episodic series has now drawn to a close, was it any good? Well, seeing as this is very much a story-based game, I think I'll actually start with the gameplay first. Telltale games are very much point-and-click affairs, but out of all the Telltale games I've played, this one definitely has the least gameplay. But what gameplay there is actually really surprised me. Combat is fairly common. It's essentially just a quick time event, and I really do mean quick time event. Commands come very quickly and don't last very long, so I often found myself frantically searching for what buttons to press. Also... Yeah. There are a couple of moments where you can die, but they're very specific moments. Admittedly, it is very satisfying to nail all the punches, but overall, the Arkham games don't need to worry about their crown just yet. I like the detective stuff a little better though. There's times in the story where you have to investigate crime scenes so grotesque they make Cole Felp shudder, and you must be scared what happened. You do this by connecting clues to each other until you solve the case. It's great to gradually work out what happened with God of and Eureka moment to close it off. Even though I said the gameplay surprised me, I only really meant that for the first episode. After that, it disappointingly doesn't really evolve. They don't get any harder, <laughs> if anything, they get easier. Which is a shame. I get more disappointment from the fact we don't see anything else like the climax of the first episode, in which he planned out the attack using the same mechanics as the detective work, which was actually my favourite scene from that episode. But I guess the gameplay does its job fine, it does keep the game from being a game and not an interactive movie, and I do enjoy them fine. Now that we've got the gameplay out of the way, let's look at the story and the choices that accompany it. This is very much a story-based game, so part of the fun is seeing how the plot twists and turns, so I won't go into too much detail, but I'll be nice and at least give you the premise. You take control of Bruce Wayne, who stalks the streets of Gotham as his alter ego Batman, like you didn't know that already. It begins with him trying to take down notorious crime boss Victor Sutton, come on Falcone, my bad. Decent walk-up, sky-high ceilings, plenty of room for my cars. Just pretend for a minute that I don't really care about any of that stuff and cut to the chase, would you? But after he confronts the gangster, he learns something about his family's legacy that changes everything. Meanwhile, a certain cat is crawling about, Harvey Dent is elected mayor, an old friend returns to Gotham, and on top of all that, a group of terrorists labelling themselves as the Children of Arkham have come to town. So Bruce has definitely got his hands full across all five episodes. So how's the actual story as a whole? Well, it's great. Telltale have put twists from the traditional Batman mythos, and it's a very refreshing take. There's one twist that I especially love, and it's something that's never been done before to my knowledge. What if there's more to the Wayne's murder than just a petty theft? The possibilities are endless with an idea like that, and that story arc is absolutely brilliant. I won't spoil it for those who don't know, but it's something I wasn't expecting going in, so it was very surprising. Telltale knows how to write a gripping yarn, and there's plenty of twists and choices that kept me engaged around all five episodes, but more on that later. So the story's great, but how well is it told? In terms of presentation, uh, it's nothing to write home about. The character models are great, but the animations still have the Telltale tradition of being very robotic, but I'll admit there's kind of a charm to it. The framerate can have some really bad drops, and this is coming from someone who typically doesn't really care about framerate. 
The script is great and occasionally a little cheesy, but we're talking about a story where a billionaire dresses up as a bat. The voice acting really sells it though. Troy Baker, while well, no Kevin Conroy, makes for a good Batman. As well as Dawson Rowe, we also have the voices of Reggie and Fett from Second Son portraying Dent and Selina, and I like both these characters. Harvey's a character you really get to see change throughout the season, and this Catwoman might be one of my favourite renditions of the character. Gordon is good, if a little underutilised. Penguin has got an interesting accent. We all saw how you felt about Falcone. <laughs> Alfred is, I don't know why I'm listing all the characters, just know they're all well written and performed, so yeah. That's good. The story also focuses more on the man under the mask, so that means you'll be spending a lot more time with Bruce Wayne than Batman. I was originally excited by this, considering the tortured character inside is actually one of my favourite things about the character, but after playing, I think not enough time was spent as Batman. It explores the psychological aspect of the character a couple of times, but for the most part, there were times where I felt like I was just playing a story about politics. It's more an issue early on, but it's still an issue. Now we get to the choice system. For those not familiar with Telltale games, you'll often get the option to choose what you want to say to another character, but other times you'll be able to choose what action you'd like to take in a situation. At the end of the episode, you'll be able to see five particular choices as well as how many other players chose the same or different decision. Okay, that sounds pretty good, but there's a catch. Do any of these choices affect anything? That's the way to put it simply. Now I understand it would take a really long time to make if every choice had an effect as well as having to come up with different paths for each choice, but it's honestly hard to tell if anything affects this story. Okay, there's a few instances, but here's two fairly major examples that prove my point. The first is at the end of episode 2, where you have to choose whether to save Harvey Dent or Catwoman. If you choose to save Catwoman, half of Harvey's face is burned off, becoming Two-Face. He then slowly starts to become mad, eventually becoming a terrorist. If you choose to save Harvey, you'll save him from having half a face, but he'll still become a terrorist, just without being Two-Face. The other example is literally the point I'm trying to make. You have to interrogate a soldier for information, and you can choose how brutally you want to be with him. On my first playthrough, I'd done nothing but intimidate him, and left him without even a scratch. The next scene has you talk to Alfred, and what does he say? You assume the persona of a bat, but you're not an animal. You beat that man half to death. No, he nearly cracked himself half to death. Do you see my point? I'll admit the actual choice making is still well implemented, and even though I knew I wasn't actually affecting anything, I at least felt involved with this story, and I still wanted to make the same choices I'd make in a real life scenario. And some of the conversations can be different depending on your decisions, so I guess the choice implementation is still alright. And I've said quite a bit of bad about this game, but I still think it's really good. Great even. But even though it is great, it does have quite a lot of issues that make it hard to recommend as a must-have. Still, I really enjoyed my hour-long sessions playing through each episode, and Batman fans really should give it a go, just to see a fresh new take on the Dark Knight. If you like the Arkham games for the combat, uh, this isn't your game. Action fans should definitely skip this one, but if you love a good story, pick it up for an 80% kind of game. Overall, it's definitely not my favourite game of 2016, but I still really liked it. Scene. Oh. We're just walking through it. What you're holding. <laughs> no, you don't. What the hell is this? The Exorcist!